more detail or with a lot more background material. So, for instance, this, you know, what's this? The press releases for the Fashionist Fantasy exhibit. Um, for Jane Fonda. Um, so I have a lot of ephemera for Jane Fonda, including um, the um, invitation for the opening of, of uh, 9 to 5, which was done sort of as a steno pad. And so you can see the, you know, the whole invitation here with the, the steno pad. And of course, when you show this to people today, <laughs> I've shown this to people and they've said, is that Hebrew? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was a dinosaur, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, so, so anyway, so here's the invitation, which is cleverly done as a, as a secretary's notepad, which they probably would say, what's a secretary, which is, you know, <laughs> but anyway, so a lot of press releases and invitations and so on about that, and then, um, so let's see, the women's Pentagon action, there's a, there, there are links here for different topics that we, you know, we touched on a little bit. So for instance, here's the women's Pentagon action. And um, so you probably recognize Grace Paley being at the um, And uh, Maya Angelou also. This was a, the photograph you saw. And Maya Angelou also being at and then a lot of ephemera, sorry, a lot of ephemera, including some that I have that are in different languages at the Women's Pentagon Action. The, um, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a historic resource, so it's nice to have some of it up. Um, okay, the, so what are these women doing today? So if you go to the link <laughs> that says resurvey and photographs of the First National Women's Conference, um, so there, you'll see one contact sheet that is, how do I do this? I, can, I think I do that, right. Uh, what a contact sheet is. Yes, so most people don't know. Today, it's, this is all the, all the strips of film, the, the 36 images that were on a roll of film. And, uh, and then you can click on it for an enlargement viewing. So I heard from this woman here at the bottom. She wrote to me and she said, I'm on your website. And so I was very excited and I asked her to send me a photograph of her today, or recent photograph. So that's her at the Eiffel Tower. And uh, so there's a lot more on this page about the women of the conference. Um, also some ephemera, so this talks about diverse delegations and it talks about the youngest delegates. It says among the younger delegates are Vanessa Aruska from Philadelphia, a 16-year-old 11th grader who lives in a group home in a ward of the Department of Welfare. I don't know if it would be phrased that way today, but that is what happened and she actually got in touch with me. And, you know, there are links for Lucy Commissar's website. Um, there are some IDs of who these other women are. But I'll show you what uh, Vanessa looks like today. So this is Vanessa. And she emailed me and she said, my boss, I'd never heard from her before. She said, my boss uh, wants me to talk. We every, every so often we have employee meetings, we have group meetings. And my boss wants me to talk about the being at the First National Women's Conference. And I was so excited and I said, please, will you send me a photograph of you today? And would you, would you answer the questionnaire that I've created? So she did, she answered the questionnaire and I think she's the only one who's done that. Of course, I asked way too many questions. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a you know, questionnaire specialist. But she says I was in a host foster home in 1977. Um, but then she says, what was your work in, uh, did the First National Conference impact you in any way? And she said, I was working for Teen Aid, Big Sister, Big Brother program. And then she said, uh, she, 
At the conference, she met C. Dolores Tucker, Coretta Scott King, and Barbara Jordan. Anyway, it's very, it's very charming. It's very, you know, simple and very, very moving to have um, this information. And then on the other end of the spectrum is Agnes Dill, who is a is Leta Laguna tribeswoman, and she got her BA when she was about 98 years old. And the college where she got her BA um, asked for this photograph, and they wrote a profile of her, which you can see here. It's called the American Indian Graduate. And there she is. And I'm in touch with Susie Chafee. I don't know if you ever saw the Super Sisters baseball, kind of baseball card. But Susie Chafee has been a great correspondent. She's very much into peace. Um, the environment, uh, Native American wisdom. And so this is an email from her about her various pursuits. And um, the other website that I created for this, um, I'm sorry? Really? Oh yeah? Oh, said it? I should read my own website. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, so this exhibit of the photographs from the First National Women's Conference in the New York State Women's Meeting was um, held in, uh, in November in New York City in the borough president's office. And so for that event, I created a website called womenonthemoveonline.com. And this website has, um, you know, just it can, I continue to update with follow-up information. So for instance, the Makers TV show, which you probably saw on public TV, my correspondence with ERA, who unfortunately didn't come to the exhibit, but I've you know been corresponding with her, Viney Burroughs, and so on. And also my stamp campaign. So I'm hoping that um, there will be a postage stamp of the women of leaders of the 70s, like Bella Abzug, like Shirley Chisholm, um, Betty Friedan, and so on. So if you go to the dianamarahenry.com website, you'll click on Stamp Campaign, and you'll see the, of course, I'd like them to be based on my photographs, so, <laughs> you know, uh, but uh, before, before she died, I didn't know she was sick. I called Liz Carpenter, um, I found her and I, I called her. I said, I'd love to have her support for the stamp campaign. And she wrote back and she said, that's a great idea. We're tired of licking the good old boys. <laughs> so, so I have that email. <laughs> I put it up on my website for about 15 minutes and then I thought, oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> but I think it's somewhere, if you kind of look closely enough at all of my pages. Somewhere I have that, I believe. But anyway, she then she said, it was very poignant, she said, I want to be on a postage stamp. And I said, oh, Liz, you have to be dead to be on a postage stamp. <laughs> I don't think that's true anymore, actually. But it used to be 10 years dead, and then it was five years dead. And, and there was this long silence, and I thought, oh my gosh, she's dying. You know, and then she died a couple of years later. But, um, but anyway, so I've added her, of course, now, and I hope that they will make a postage stamp of her. Um, so other, other links here uh, where you can see more of uh, where these women are is uh, at the who came and why link, right? Who Came and Why, and also at event photos. And so here, you can see Sylvia Ortiz, who is one of the torchbearers with Gloria Steinem. And here's Peggy Cochranot and Sylvia and Michelle, the three torchbearers, with Amy Simon, who does a program called She's History, and she actually performed it at uh, my opening, which was great, really great. Um, <clears throat> so these are the ladies today. Here's Melba Tolliver on the right, and uh, 
with her natural hair. <laughs> what a sweet, wonderful woman. Just really great. Me with Amy, Gloria. Um, and then one of the other pages where you can get a little more of an update, and I think probably the best one here, is story behind the photo. And so here I've added, I've quickly added Viney Burroughs. <laughs> It's when I met her in New York, of course. She's no slouch. She gave me all of her publicity information. So her brochure is here with a, an account of her different performances and where you can write to her to, you know, contact her for performances. And then here's, here's Gloria with ERA. And on the right is ERA with her mother, Judy McCarthy. So her mother with the dark glasses was the one who was a delegate to the conference in 1977. She was a single mother of six children. And uh, she was a, a Native American woman from uh, Phoenix, Arizona. And ERA tells the story very poignantly. And uh, she says, I'm s uh, so grateful for the gifts the ERA movement and my name have given me. Before the movement, I could have never enjoyed the position in life I do now. Also, my name and everything it stands for has made me believe in myself regardless of the difficulties I faced in life. I truly thank my mother and all of you for what you've done for me. My name has given me strength and confidence throughout my life. I'm a self-made person. I began college at 16. I now have three degrees. My companies are a foreign language school in Fort Collins, a nationwide marketing company and a social ne networking platform I provide to communities throughout the USA and Canada. I, so um, anyway, and her website is here also. There are lots of links to her websites and to her mother's. So here's a picture of her mother, not a very good photograph, but there is a better one, which is going to be scanned by UMass. And this is some of her mother's artwork. And I have links to her website also and a description of her work, and this is ERA's work, and so on. So there's a lot of resources um, on this website if you want to look into these women and, and take even more inspiration from them than I've been able to give you. <laughs> so thank you very much again. if you want to talk or well I think have maybe questions. some people might have some questions yeah. to answer them. or and uh, please just talk about yourself when you ask the question so that we know if you want who you are yeah um, I burned my bras and then I went really burning bras was an urban myth because you read all the academic literature and it says women did not burn their bras. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, that's what I imagine. Like, um, yeah. Oh, well, you need to write an academic uh, journal, uh, journal article. <laughs> because that is being there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get away from it all <laughs> and um, just just get as far as I could from so hence Newport. I just got on 91 and drove until I saw next stop Canada and I thought, well, I better get off <laughs> and look for something. And I just, you know, um, I wanted to retire and live, you know, in within my means, which I haven't managed to do, but, you know, it's probably possible, theoretically. So, yeah. Do you have a dark room now? That's a great question. So, thank you for asking that. I have a dark room, but it's not set up. 
and I haven't had a darkened set up for about 25 years. So, but I've carried it everywhere with me. And I would love to set up this dark room. And at first, you know, I thought maybe the Mac at Newport, and I contacted some other uh, nonprofit arts institutions in Vermont. And I'd rather have it set up somewhere where other people can use it too. I love teaching photography, and I love teaching basic darkroom photography. Basic, beginning darkroom photography. I taught 15 classes called Into the Dark Room for the Carmel Adult School. It was a, a program I, I developed and originated, and it was fabulous. And people started to exhibit and publish their work, you know, from taking my classes. So beginning photography, darkroom is, people learn 80% of what they'll ever learn as photographers, no matter how far they go. So that's the real thrill for me, you know, is watching them have that that tremendous learning boost. So if you know any organizations that are, you know, hopefully not too far a drive so that I could go and work in the dark room sometimes, I'd love to donate this dark room and see it set up. And it doesn't take much. What it really takes is a classroom outside the dark room. The dark room is a small part of the operation, but then you have to bring your prints out and look at them and discuss them. And you know, so that's important too, is to have a classroom outside the dark room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do they? may not be set up today. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It's going away. Where are you it's, where are you living now? I'm living up near the Catholic Church in Newport. Okay. So there, I'm a wonderful group two wonderful photographer with a dark uh, with a professional darkroom equipment in that area. Great. And you might contact uh, the mm -hmm. professional photographers. That would be a wonderful organization for you. Well to please on. if you will email card and you know I'll write down what you talk to me about. I'd love to you know get in touch with those people. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. But you may have you may know some organization. It doesn't have to be photography, it could be a community group of some kind, you know. Might like to set this up. I've taught everything. I've been an artist in residence through the New York Foundation for the Arts. I had a 40-day residency in the Westchester Public Schools. I set up a dark room in a closet, supply closet. We blacked out classroom windows, and you know, there's a lot of different ways I've taught photography. So I'd be happy to do that again. Yeah. Yeah. Anything. Yeah. And even if you don't have water, you can you can do something like uh, blueprints, which are fun. Yeah, body. You can even lie down on blueprint paper. You know, do things like that. So. I don't want to belabor the obvious, but the power of your pictures was so astounding. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. I, I so I try to. Um, I try to not impose myself on the people, so to let them, you know, see them through a window, let them speak instead of 